And welcome back to the Cards Desk after a banger of a song of the week. Now, the original from DJ Sammy, Do You Think You're Better, Ruffle Lol, was one of my favorite tracks of all time. I know it's better off alone, but go listen to it. Do You Think You're Better, Ruffle Lol. I promise that's what you'll hear. <laughs> Misfits bounced back. And I think both of the ways these teams won is kind of quintessential to their styles. Rogue had a significant early game advantage. They played their mid game well. They did not make mistakes in that 20 to 30 minute mark and they punished Misfits everywhere. Now Misfits on the other hand, a little bit more scrappy, a little bit more chaotic, but it was that top half of the map of uh, Resort, Vizio and Hirit that really unlocked the victory. Honestly, I, believe, I, I think that the top bot side of the map for Misfits stepped up majorly. Yep. Kobe in the team fights, Vanda being included in a lot of roaming and helping Razok around. And I think Hirit definitely redeemed himself from game one. Yeah, no doubt about that. So with the series tied at one to one, we have at least two more games to play. And as we look towards the draft, Rogue had side selection because they lost game two. They elected blue side once again. Now, what do you think that will have an impact on the draft? We didn't see a change in bans at all from the Rogue perspective, but banning the Lucian instead of the Varus from Misfits not only forced the first pick, Varus, but the answer was ready and Misfits executed one. Yeah, and it changed Larson. Yeah. And the way Lance, La, uh, Larson sorry, replies on the map. Playing the Oriana, we mentioned how it's not going to be as impactful early. And it's going to be used as a tool to stop a lot of the engage from Misfits later on. Zoning tool with the shockwave, yada, yada, yada. But Vito again pushed his advantage with the LeBlanc, he was everywhere, and Razok was able to play and get unlocked on the top side of the map. The thing is, even though it was a Misfits win and it was Misfits favored, um, it required sort of a mistake from Misfits for VTO got, you know, he tried to jump on to hunt some in the top lane. He died. He knew but there were three the people cost, there as well, yeah. Yeah, the cost of the ultimates from Rogue, that allowed Misfits to punish, right? The reason I highlight that is because of how close to the edge, how dangerous those decisions are, there's always that possibility that Rogue can win the skirmishes. Now, let's turn our attention back to the draft as I check my notes. For both previous games, Lee Sin, Thresh, and Syndra have been the bands from Rogue on the blue side. Twister Fane and Callista are the only two consistent, and we're going to find out if anything is going to change and which player that will impact. Honestly, I wonder... I wonder if this time they might choose to leave Lissin open, but then it's it's a mind game because Miss it's played on all three lanes that Lissin can be played in top, mid, and uh, jungle. They're gonna choose to ban Varus themselves, so maybe that Lissin ban has already been replaced by the Varus. We're gonna find out. Thresh still open as well. Um, Lucian, Callista are the next two big ones here for the Misfits side. As we get to the final ban, now Thresh is open. He's gonna be banned away. It is. The highest um, contested pick. I'm I'm smelling Zinzao right here for Inspired again, because they're going to have to ban the Lucian away. It was so influential in the hands of Larson. And instead, it's going to be another Camille blind pick Insta. Now, the Zinzao is a good call out here, Trouble, because both teams that have won the game had Zin on their respective sides. The engage power has been really useful. And of course, Razork had some pretty good Crescent Guard ultimates in those later fights to buy some time. Yeah, and we see that both of these mid uh, top laners, uh, excuse me, are favoring Camille heavily, both willing to pick it blind. Jace is still up and available. Something that can punish Melee into, uh, into ranged. I can't say I'm very happy about the Ash insta lock right here for Kobe, but seeing two melee champions, the likes of uh, Viego and Camille, maybe you can sort of neutralize them. In I mean, that has just stolen the top half of the map from Misfits, yeah. right? These are the exact same champions that Misfits just used. Can Rogue to take replicate? Down Rogue. Uh, we know that they can. The question is, will they? Whoa! And Fiora is locked in to stare down Camille. Okay, so Fiora, typically used as a split push champion. Holebreaker was uh, added into the game very recently. We'll see what Hero chooses to do with that. Now I'm taking a look and I cannot see Ooh. a single professional game on Fiora for Hero. So this is a first time professional matchup into Oda Wamne's Camille. We'll talk about what it means to the comps in a moment or two as now we turn our attention to phase two. Ziggs banned away, as is Rise. So what are we looking for? The bottom lane for Rogue 
the support and mid laner for Misfits. You need heavy AP in the hands of Viteo and something that's going to generate a lot of pressure and priority just so Razok again can play for the top side of the map. The one thing that comes to mind that hasn't been banned away is Viteo's Zoe that can perma create pressure in the mid lane and push waves into waves and waves. But again, you have to be extremely careful into Little Blanc because it trades really well into mages. Would it fit the rest of the composition when you look at the fact that they've got that Ash and the Zin already? And um, that's the question mark I'll be asking. And of course, if Rogue anticipated, if Rogue got a little afraid of it, they could just ban it away. They've got one last ban. They'll remove the Orion instead, which is the more safe option, I think. Karma is something that has come to mind as well uh, for VTO pushes lanes. Uh, extremely safe into the LeBlanc due to all the shielding and healing that she does. And you can power up uh, champions such as the Zinza, such as the Fiora. Is Viteo going to put down his uh, prowess into killing his opponents, pushing them out of lane to play something that facilitates his top side of the map? You have to wait to see, because of course, if you lock in the support now, not only do you deny a pick to Trimby, you allow yourself to uh, Pick the safest possible option. This is so good. This is so That's good. It. Braum applying the passive on all these melee champions that I'm seeing right now from Rogue. It's most likely going to be uh, a melee champion for Trimby as well as support. It's a very good line of defense so far. Oh, is this going to be the Kogma Lulu? The oh. Kogma Lulu. Okay, what does this mean for the gear composition on Rogue as we have all five pieces? I'm just, I'm just, I just have to wait for the last pick. I want to see what VTO has in store for that. You could go with Zoe here. Generates priority, poking down one of these champions later on, forcing them back together with Ash poking. And it's going to happen. So Zoe will complement Ash, Fiora, Zinzao, and Brom. You've got the long range, CP Trouble Bubble, Enchanted Crystal. You've got low mobility backline, Cogmo and Lulu. But you then you've got to dodge the three for yeah. top off. And you can't play Oli anymore. Misfits curated a composition last game where they could all go in and pile onto their opponents. You cannot do that. You need to play with the space that you create with the Zoe and the Ash. You need to create picks, you need to poke. On the other hand, Rogue have curated themselves a very well-rounded composition for team fighting, from front to back, with Camille and Viego creating the space, and then LeBlanc and Cogmo wreaking havoc I, in the back line. I think the Misfits' like longer-range engage tools are a little safer. I use the term loosely, quote-unquote, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you look at Rogue, their flanking options, terrifying. Mm -hmm. Braum can only shield one direction, right? So that's going to be really, really difficult. And it comes down to execution. The last time Copy played Ash, the series did not work out. Oda Wamne, just as a quick stat for you, has played 16 games of Camille professionally. He has won 12 of them. He is exceptionally talented on that pick. And it's the second time this series we've seen the blind picks. But he's facing down Fiora. That was the counter. Can hear it make this counter work? I'm not sure they expected it. Again, I want to see if Hero will go for more of a roaming style, sorry, um, split push style, which we don't necessarily see due to the pressure of having to go for objectives and stacking the map. Well, we'll find out what they do. It's Rogue versus Misfits. Welcome to Summoner's Rift. Um, hugely important win for Misfits. Uh, they were on a seven-game loss streak to Rogue. Not a single win this year, including multiple wins at the end of last year. I think all time there were four wins, 12 losses prior to this. Now it's 5-13, but that loss streak, and I think... It's the, been broken. It has, and I think the mentality shift that that can help, you know, relieve that pressure, show that you picked up the first win of the entire year against a team that has been your kryptonite, maybe that will give Misfits some momentum as they're now in the next game. Also, when you're losing over and over again and you've tried so many different things against the team and you can't pick up a win, you forget how to beat them. You forget what it is that breaks down Rogue when you specifically play against them as Misfits. And they sort of found that switch, now turned back around. This is a very particular composition that Misfits have right here, where again, they need to play for picks. They need to play with their poke. They can't necessarily just push the trigger and go all in like they did last game. I, I actually love that you mentioned that because 
whenever you do play these comps with, with like a Zoe and Ash, where you, where you do you do have the option to either split push, you know, with the Fiora, or you want to keep people at, at arm's length. You want to be in control of the vision. You want to be in control of sort of the pace of the game. And that means the pressure and the onus will be on Misfits. Of course, in the mid lane, Larson on that LeBlanc already jumping forward onto VTO Zoe. VTO is going to need a couple of levels. And this is the interesting matchup for me to see how the Camille and the Fiora plays out, especially Odo. He's gone for the Ignite TP. He wants to play more aggressive and try to punish hear it on the Fiora. It happened game one. We saw it. And first picking the Camille, you need to make sure that you've got it better. But here it with the first level two is going to push uh, behind Odoamne a little bit. And with Inspired playing towards the other side of the map, Odoamne is going to have to be a little bit cautious. Yeah, won't be able to land that repost. A little bit of early damage. Odo's going to ding two as well. I'm going to keep my eyes on the mini map. Two games in a row, um, Inspired has been able to come up behind here it. Game one was able to secure the kill. Game two. Spider is invading. Here it escaped with his life. And Razork. Oh. Chuck out W. I think Vision there. Not going to chase further forward. Didn't tag anything. So I assume he just thinks the camp is stolen. Oh, right? here's the thing. He believes that Inspired possibly started on his side of the map or that he's just very simply splitting the map. And why does that happen right here? We talked about how Odo Amna has the Ignite. He needs to come up ahead because the Fiora came through into the Camille. So what does Inspired do? He splits the map in half. He does not allow Razog to play anywhere near the top side of the map. And here it has to be extremely cautious because he has no one around him at this point. And he does have a tendency around minute four or five to try to pick up fights with top laners, overextend, and get punished. Well, man. <coughs> Excuse me, that has happened twice this series already. This time around, I think is maybe starting to back off just a moment or two and inspire. I wonder what the this wave. Krugs camp out here. It could be in trouble, but he is backing away. It is still a little bit scary at trouble. I wonder what the wave state is like for Misfits Botland as well, because Razok is sticking around. Lulu called more very squishy, but here it in trouble yet again. He is indeed. The repost comes out, flash away. Here it will get jumped on. He's trying to get some damage back onto one. Oh! Oh! First blood to hear it, but he will concede the kill back to Inspired. Now all of a sudden, Razok is going for this dive. Flash is available for both targets, holding on to it. Only three minions did not chase further. So kudos to hear it for that one. Not done yet. VTO is going to chase forward gets caught up by the chains paddle star out and Larson's using that clone to perfection would have been able to body block and the shot wasn't fired here he's turning the 2v1 around and grabbing himself a first blood walking back into the lane with a pickaxe that is actually huge he's gonna miss probably maybe one minion as well from this entire I think that's like two waves probably stacked up by Odo Amne he's gonna be able to soak up all that experience and gold and that is so important because he only had like 10 CS I think when this play happened Hans Summer gets stunned up. Cleanser's already cucked out. Ignite comes down from Vander as well. So Hans Summer is going to be in some trouble. Starts to back away. Stray volley will be problematic. Low mana at the same time. Look at and that wave no, stacking up. No TPs for have, Odo or Lawson. They have no TPs to help them out. And Hans Summer and Trimby have no mana underneath their tower. And now Odo Amne overextended right there. Done, 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 done. The hook shot from long range gets Odo to safety. Resort committed his flash for that one. But this time, Misfits come out swinging early. They are down just a little bit of gold for now. But I think kudos are well played. Stop saying kudos, Trevor. Uh, to hear it. Mechanically showing that they can deliver when they are on a comfortable pick. And Razork, he's the one invading. He'll have the backup of Hirit not too long. Smite fight goes out. And the Blast Cone will be taken to safety here. It did look as though Larson had already left lane, so it would have been a collapse onto Misfits. And here's the thing. Throughout this whole chaos that's been happening on the map, Inspired managed to take his camps back, and he's now sitting on a very comfortable 16 CS lead over Razog. You see that he's a level up as well. He managed to stall the Gromp away, and now he's very comfortably moving towards the bot side of his map. So he's using all that pressure that Razog is trying to generate to get back, give back to himself, get farmed up, get back into the fight. And I think if I can ask observers to toggle over to the goal just to see where that advantage is coming from, you can see in the jungle, yeah. significant difference, right? Obviously, keep in mind that Spite has the kill as well. He was able to take down Hirit, so that will be benefiting him. I think he pushed that wave out, but it's a small advantage and inspired Viego in the previous game, despite being heavily influential, it wasn't the game changer because Misfits played their team fights very well. They flanked very well they won't have that same opportunity this time around. No, and as you can see, the game has sort of 
is sitting on a standstill right now. Both of these teams are wearing the situations. They don't necessarily have to pressure anywhere on the map at this point. I think the focal point for these two teams is the top side and how it plays yeah. out. Will Fiora run out of control? Odo Amner running the Ignite. Will he be able to run over the Fiora? And as you can see now, Larsen on something that is more aggressive. He's trying to generate plays. They both have level six. The Hextech Ultimatum is going to help so much with the dive. So is Larsen's passive. Here it's going to jump himself forward and just gets blown up deleted underneath the tower. And just like you talked about, Trouble, with the pressure being in the top lane, or the focus rather, allowing Odo to get another assist, allowing Larson to pick up the kill, that is a very big advantage. And for, for Misfits, this is the game where they have to prove the haters wrong, they have to silence the naysayers, because everybody I spoke to said this is a Rogue 3-0 or 3-1. 3-1 was the most optimistic. And this composition from Misfits needs to show elegance, needs to show patience, restraint. needs to show restraint. Thank you, that is such a good word. And it also is going to be different to how they won that previous game. Absolutely. As you can see, they're not looking for anything to overextend themselves. They're simply just going for the stacking again, getting the dragon. Razok, I think, has three out of three uh, first dragons for Misfits right here. They're trying to sneak in the objectives when nothing is going on on the map. But you can see the difference factor in game one and three is Larsen and what pick he is on. He's on the Lucian. He's able to generate pressure through mid lane. He's on the LeBlanc, the same. Oriana, not so much because he was chilling. He was trying to farm. He wasn't as all over the map as he is right now. But now his LeBlanc is starting to completely open the map. Um, I'd like to go back and see what happened with the wave because Vitio hadn't pushed in that wave. The wave was completely in the middle and Larson was able to roam, get the kill and get back and get all the CS. So I wonder what happened there, but that was really well played uh, from Rogue's mid laner. Yeah, and while that's going on, because again, Larson was able to kind of counter push a little, yeah. he was able to support um, Inspired in the river, which allowed the Rift Hail to be picked up. But that is a chunky, chunky paddle star. And of course, with the spell thief here for Vitio. There is the potential. Our observers don't troll. Grand challenge is available for Hirit. Will he issue it? You have to feel that he may think about it. And on the minimap, Razork making his way up top, even on gold. One dragon to Misfits with Cloud being the second dragon. We're going to be in for, again, either an Ocean Soul or an Infernal Soul. Two very, very important um, uh, souls to fight for. And Misfits have shown a good level of control and play around those dragons as a as a win condition for them. Again, it was so important as Razok is going to get supported here by the ward. That Infernal Soul that Misfits got in the previous game, it was so influential to their fight, adding that extra bit of damage. Again, you see Larsen on the move. They spotted Hear It, Hear It. You could 1v2, can you 1v3? We're going to find out. Razork is here. This will turn into a 2v2. Odo will be a little bit late to the play. Hookshot comes in and we'll be able to, with the help of the Hextech Ultimatum, pick up one. Grand Challenge was issued and Hear It just walks into his death. Two quick kills for Inspired. Razork sacrifices himself, so his top lane gets out unscathed, and then Hear It walks back in. And it's that greed that we've talked about over and over for Hear It, where he's trying to make the extra plays, he's trying to uh, to create an opportunity for his team, and he ends up overextending. Hear It right now is out. Razork doesn't even have to go in for that play, because they do know that Odo Amne is still there. So I feel like that was a little bit of miscommunication from the side of Misfits. Maybe they thought they could take this fight because they had their ultimates available, but the 2v3 is just really hard and Larsen again on the map, creating builds for his team. It's so much more important as well because the tower's gonna be secured, the Rift Herald as well. And just like that, in the blink of an eye, 2,000 gold lead for Misfits. A 3-0 Viego, very much in line with what happened in the previous game. The difference is, Rogo significantly further ahead as far as gold is concerned. Absolutely, and it had to be created from the top side of the map. We see that now Rogue locking in in the first three picks, their entire top side of the map has given them the opportunity and the strength to play through that. They locked in three really huge skirmish heavy champions and they're using them to, to their advantage, especially my eyes are on last in this entire game. He finds windows where he leaves his lane and get advantage on the rest of the map. And of course, three three kills of his team's 4-1, secured two assists. He's down 15 CS to Vitio. And it's here it that once again is the recipient of a lot of love, a lot of attention from Rogue. And much like his performances in week eight, just before we get to that in a moment, is there is a potential dive gap. Razork 
audaciously charged for. Blast gun comes back out. There's not enough support. There's not enough information. And Misfits again engage uninformed underprepared and Rogue will take more place. I think that what you're looking for is unrestrained because we mentioned how they need to play in a particular way where you allow the Ash to poke, you allow Viteo on the Zoe to poke, but Razor just goes in and here it is in trouble yet again. He's just going to get died here. He will indeed. The Hextech Ultimate is available, not even going to need it. Get needed, correction. As now Rogue pick up their sixth kill and this is just looking like the first game of the series where Rogue on an individual level are outplaying their opponents despite a couple extra turret shots. They'll secure themselves two plates. It's a gigantic advantage, and I'm scratching my head at some of the decisions. Yeah, Razok again, he gets pushed out of his jungle. You see Larson right there. Even if he's alone, he's just so slippery he can get away, and Razok goes way too deep. Yes, he has VT or Roman from mid lane, but again, Ash, Zoe are two poke champions. You need to land the skill shots for them to do damage. And Larson's LeBlanc is huge right now. You can't just dive into him. 2-0-3, Luden's Echo completed. Odo and Inspired already got their Divine Sundras. And the two Mythics on the side of Mispis is for Vito and for Kabi. Now, Dragon number two is uh, up and alive. Again, there is uh, not a huge amount of pressure for Misfits to challenge for this one as they secured the first of the game. Concede this play play. You now need to make up this gold deficit. Make up some time. Let's see whether or not this Ash Arrow will fire and miss. Simply not good enough. So Misfits, they don't go, they go fishing, they don't catch anything. And it's Rogue that are now in complete control. They can slow the game down and try to uh, strangle Misfits again, deny the resources, deny the minion waves, and try to push these towers. And again, they have a great composition, the front to back. They have backline access with Inspired Nodo Amne if they want to engage either on the Zoe or the Ash. And then look at that damage coming already from Hansama. Doesn't even have an item straight onto the VTO's Zoe. So they do have late game carries. Ooh, there's the cleanse flash. and flash secured from Hansama. While that's going on, Larson's going to continue to shove in this bottom lane. So yes, that is now a flashless Cogmore that is potentially punishable, but you need is, to make it work. Hand Sam and Tribute, we haven't seen them the whole game. They're literally hoovering whatever lane is left behind. Hand Sam is literally going from lane to lane when they get abandoned, and he's just grabbing whatever minions crash onto the tower. It's inspired and Larson with Otto Amne roaming around the map, creating the plays because these are the Fed members. They don't care too much about the combo because yes, he's the late game insurance. If something miraculously goes wrong, uh, wrong for Rogue, then yes, Hans Hammer will be there with the Kogmo to carry the team fights. But so far, my eyes again, mid jungle duo, so important, so influential for these two teams. I feel like in this series, LeBlanc will be highly contested in the draft from now on. Yeah, it has been um, very influential in the, two, the previous game, this game now. I also think for VTO on the Zoe, you know, this was his signature pick. This was what he made his debut on in the LEC against Fnatic. And oh, has had fantastic it. performances. Paddlestar goes out. The clone is there available too. Cobby's in the bottom lane. I'm wondering if the Ash Arrow comes out. Larson manages to escape. It costs him his flash. Now the mid tower is being focused Look behind down. Them. Fantastic play from Larson. Continues to draw Misfits in, buying time. The tower was secure, but Razork's the target. Is not Vander's running for his life. Hextech Ultimate comes down. Two quick kills for Rogue. That is at the cost of Larson's life. Now Vito and Hero continue to run away. A second tower did fall in the bottom lane. Misfits picked that up. So they lose two members, but they get two towers and a kill. Yeah, and Colby, I think from downtown, snipes Larson somehow, gets a really fast shutdown. So that's really good for Ash. But again, Rogue win in these fights because Misfits are behind, yet they want to fight 4v5. Rogue are really quick to pull the trigger. They've got the skirmishes right there. Five kills now onto Inspired. And this Viego is slowly but surely getting out of control. And we cannot disregard Han Summer has not died yet. He's on that late game policy slash insurance for Rogue. He will keep on scaling. I think he's going to have his first item, Shield Ball, already completed. And it's so scary when you think about all of the damage and all of the potential. Like, if you focus down one or two champions with the arrow or the bubble, everyone else can just kill you. So, so this is how this fight played out. Someone has, uh, sorry, uh, Larson has done this before. He just walks into the sleepy trouble bubble, but he gets away due to the clone. I think Misfits again there were a little bit hesitant to pull the trigger. They do hit him with uh, with the sleep, but then they just don't commit. I think the arrow snipes him from, yeah, from downtown. Kobe managed to grab himself, I think, a shutdown as well. Yes, nicely done. Okay, good job there, Observers, highlighting. Kobe gets the tower, gets the kill, gets the shutdown. It's still 4,000 gold, though, trouble, and it is still Rogue that are in control. 
And I think it's going to be so much more difficult for Misfits to slow down the engages and the onslaught that can come from Camille, from Viego, from LeBlanc. And we're a minute and a half from the next Dragon. You can feel both of these teams will be willing to fight for that as Vanda just gets slowed down and backs away. Yeah, and it's just so much harder to play these sort of compositions that Misfits chose, right? Uh, and we've talked over and over again, even before we even made playoffs, get something that is easier to execute when your opponent is much better at playing their game than you. And Misfits did that in the previous one. They chose all-in champions right here. They have to play with a bit more restraint. And honestly, Razog hasn't showed much of that this game, which has resulted in him being behind. Here it is again, the recipient of a lot of violence. Yeah, he is indeed. The repost will at least do uh, dodge some of that ability. Larson is toying with Misfits. The Enchanted Crystal Arrow is available from Kobe. And when you see if he gets five Vanders, locked underneath the turret, but he escapes for now. Winter's bite by some time as the volley at least threatened a potential engage. Kobe always had that uh, ultimate available to dissuade further follow-up. But you see how difficult it is for them to even pressure the tower. Rogues stand strong and they keep it alive. Yeah, and you have to think, where is Viteo in all this? Because we have praised him in the entirety of the series. Even in the first game they lost, things were happening around Viteo. They were playing around the mid lane. This Zoe is just a wave shover at this yeah. point. You cannot necessarily play around it because, again, she wants to play in the particular way where she needs to poke, she needs to get a pick. And Razok needs the go button, which Ash and Brom can give him. That's why you see right now that the Zinzao is playing around the bot side of the map. But Misfits, yet again, they need to make sure that they make some picks before they engage. Can they do this in this fight? Well, Dragon is alive. Rift Herald is thrown down in the mid lane. And five members of Misfits can try to shove this wave back out. Rogue are the first ones into the river, and it's going to be up to Misfits to push forward. There's no vision inside. Inspired dashes forward. And not going to be able to continue the chase. So we're waiting to see the skill shots. The ultimate from Cobby's Ash, the sleepy trouble bubbles. Will anyone be slowed down? And in actual fact, will Misfits even want to contest this? It doesn't look like they want to. Yeah, there's absolutely no vision. I think it would be extremely optimistic to walk into Fog of War from Misfits and potentially try to find a pick. Again, they're just so reliant in killing someone, poking them out, forcing them back, that if it doesn't happen, they cannot actually force fights. Uh, Inspired and Odo, they want to force a fight though. They threatened it. Look, just stepping into the zone, stepping forward saying, we dare you Misfits to defend the wave. They don't. They lose their fourth tower. Yeah, and again, it's the 4v5. You see here it's up top lane. You're right, it's cool. We have the 4v5. Larson is extremely strong on this LeBlanc right now, and so is Inspired Viego. So they're just pushing with the money advantage that they have. They've got big, fat wallets, and they're using them right now around the map. It's just about making sure that they don't overextend. I think this is where uh, Rogue need to be really careful, playing around their vision and playing around the limits. And for Misfits, they do have some long-range tools to look for those picks. You know, if they are able to catch a member of Rogue, who now have to extend deep into Misfits territory for further towers, right? With four towers secured, two dragons already, we're 20 minutes in. So Baron's going to start becoming a thing, and there's a lot of damage for Rogue to work with. But you don't want to be hit by Paddle Stars, or the Crystal Arrow, or the Braum ulti when you start looking at those objectives. So as long as Rogue play it, you know, calm and controlled as we know they can, they once again are in a position where they can just deny Misfits any of the objectives that they're looking for. Yeah. So right now, the vision game is going to start going down. 20 minutes into the game is where the game usually might come in a standstill, especially if all outer towers have gone down. And we can see that for Rogue, that is the case right now. Don't forget that Misfits do have a bunch of wave clear, especially in the middle with Viteo sitting around on the Zoe. So they can't push too much unless Larson manages to find a pick. He was trying to fish there for Viteo. Fortunately for Misfits, Razork was nearby. You can see how Rogue are playing in the darkness. They control Misfits jungle, so they press forward. And that mid tower fell because Rogue threatened the dive. Now with all of the control and the pressure in the mid lane, it's allowing Odo and now Larson to push in the bottom lane. Larson is absolutely ever two, two, one, and five. Inspired is shadowing him, working together. Enchanted Crystal Arrow does come out directly under the tower. Here it issues a grand challenge. They get themselves a kill onto Odo. That's not the shutdown they're looking for. It's Inspired that's worth the most. So Misfits find a kill and they survive. They hold on to that tower. Again, this is how Misfits want to play this. One sleepy trouble bubble, one arrow from the ash. Someone trying to get a peek onto the map so you can dissuade Rogue back into 
the territory and then you can start laying down the vision playing a little bit more cautious when you have vision around you and you want to push out the waves because this is what rogue are really good at doing they're pushing out every single wave they choke the vision off of you and then they make plays with their fed members like glasses and blank like inspired viego and right now one pick is what misfits need for a fight. Unfortunately for them, there was no objective. No, and they need one pick before an objective multiple times yeah. to bring back this gold deficit. I do think, though, the fact that Herit was able to pick up that kill, in my mind, is actually quite important. This Fiora can become really problematic and does have such a powerful kit when you want to look down those 1v1 scenarios. And because of how far behind here it is, ah, you said it. some support. 1v1 scenarios, Rogue will have to force Misfits to yeah. fight on a 5v5. And Camille is just much more superior in team fights than Fiora is, because Fiora plays the team fights a little bit harder. And of course, if you lock her into a Camille ultimate, she won't be able to dash and slice around. No, she won't be able to. And uh, we've seen how limiting that is. Now, as Misfits were roaming down the river, Trimby was just a little caught out, so he blew his flash as we were talking there. And we're now a minute away from Dragon. So, Trouble, let's look at the minimap. Let's look at Vision. It feels as though Rogue have the ability to push the waves up. Bottom is just about to get caught by Hirit. Do you think uh, Rogue will just make a beeline for this Dragon? There's no TP wards for Hirit to play around either. Ooh, look at Misfits, though. They're playing towards the top side of the map. Razok has seen that he needs to play around Kobe and Vanda. They're using Ash to move around the map and try to get objectives. But look at the side of the map. It is rogue. They brought the whole cavalry to make sure that they don't lose the Baron, that they get some vision down. And again, look at the picks. Will be, will Video be able to get a Sleepy Trouble Bubble? Will the arrow hit from Kobe? These are the very two very crucial tools that they have for Razork. And of course, there's no ultimate now for Razork. He's to ring jet. the gauge once again. Not enough support just yet. Paddlestar does a lot of damage to Trimby, but it's in fact Razork that goes down. Inspired steals his soul. Trimby's dead next, immediately followed up by Kobe, who did manage to get the ultimate off. There is one kill for Herit, and now Inspired's running for his life. Three members of Misfits somewhat split up, and Hunt Summer remains untouched. He's able to destroy what remaining health bars there are. It's a two for three in favor of Rogue. And we may did you take down Domina, you take down Larson, and Rogue resorts into the initial carry that they picked in the draft, which is that cold mob with the two items. And again, Misfits, you can't play these scrappy fights. That place is very good to fight for Misfits because it's a bit uh, of a choke point, smaller spaces for Rogue to play in, and Viteo with the Zoe and Ash with the Volleys should technically shine here. But no, when Razok dies so quickly, they have no front line. Kobe is stuck between a Rogue and a hard place because Rogue jumps him instantly and VTO cannot necessarily play the game. Also, we have to mention Infernal um, Rift. Really hard to play for Zoe because it stops all these sort of long range sleepy trouble bubbles going through walls because the walls are cut in half. It, they are. And um, in that fight as well, VTO did not have the death cap completed. Well, Larson did. Razork was chunked out so much so early. So the multiple kills opened up the third dragon for Rogue. They are now on soul points. Ooh. Four minutes away from an Infernal Soul. Han Sama got himself three assists to his name. He's already got that Wits End, the Shield Bow, and he remains untouched. Misfits can't get through the rest of Rogue to even threaten him. And nearly 100% kill participation for Inspired Viego. 7-0-3 right now. He is terrifying. They haven't been able to shut him down at all because it's always Rogue pulling the trigger and punishing a member of Misfits Overextend. And usually that one that gets punished is either Hirit or Razog. If it's Razog, Misfits have to be very careful because then the objectives open up for Rogue as well. Now, you do see how much damage Vito has to play with. Larson lost 50% of his hit points with a single paddle star. Sleepy Trouble Bubble as well. And Spider will deny some of that vision while that was going on, Hirit and Odo were trading ever so slightly in the bottom lane, but it takes so much for Misfits to even find a single kill that they, they can't continue that. The follow-up just isn't there, unfortunately, and they're still just grabbing at straws. The way that Misfits play the game is very conditional. Again, they have to hit that one skill shot, and they rely on two skill shots, whilst Rogue have the 
brute force, the raw brute force of the Viego, of the LeBlanc going in, of the Camille diving into the back line. They've got much more tools to reach and make the plays, whilst Misfits is much more situational. That's what's hurting them right now. Yeah, and that means that Misfits continue to fall behind. Um, also, they hit Viego in the mid lane. No one wanted to commit onto a 7-0 and zero Viego, but with a Sterax. No, that Harrod path uh, as well, doing just a lot to buy time. Odo and Inspired will be able to take down the fifth tower as we're three minutes away. They'll be able to leave some wards in this quadrant. The Observers are doing such a great job of highlighting how much information Rogue has to play with. And this is a very Rogue style of, you yep. know, lead and advantage. They slowly choke you away. They take your objectives first and they'll take your towers and they will slowly choke you, uh, choke your vision away from you to the point where you're going to have to face check and We've seen how much it's hurt Misfits trying to face check for some near vision on the map. I love that you highlight that because Rogue have played between the mid and the bottom lane for probably six minutes to eventually take out that um, bottom turret, which is now five to three. With the wards that have been left in Misfits jungle, um, there are tools for Rogue to flank and to surprise. But keep in mind, they can still be in trouble if multiple long-range tools hit. But for Misfits, they want a longer engage. And didn't quite see Arrow Tribby flashed again. away from that one. They did get the flash from Tribby with two minutes to go. But you get a flash from Alulu, and then you have to use Vander's ultimate and Ash ultimate. That means that Rogue have the freedom to move a little bit further out because Ash's ultimate is down. And Kobe, Kobe has been the one initiating most of these fights for Misfits. Fortunately for Misfits, they should have their ultimates available before the next Dragon yeah. fight. And that means Trimby has to be on full alert for his positioning. It's a minute 26 as that recall just about finishes. And let's put our shoes, hmm. our thinking caps on, right? How do Misfits specifically play this next fight if they want to prevent the soul and, and keep a, a you know a hope to close this game out, that is indeed a great question. I think this is why um, they have to play again. They have to play around Colby. They have to find a pick before they move in. The problem right now is because of Rogue's brute force with their composition with the Viego, the LeBlanc. We talked about this before, and the Camille. It's just so much easier for them to get vision. If you look at the bot quadrant uh, of the map for of Razog's jungle, it's fully warded. They will know where misfits come from on that dragon, and they do see Larson's TP as well. Well, Larson's going to come in. Sorry, they don't see Larson's seconds. TP. No, no information here from misfits. Larson's going hunting. Oh. Vito a little bit split up. He could get jumped on. Flash is available to him. Gets caught, knocked up into the air by some time with that stopwatch. And here it's going to be too late to the fray. The Ash Arrow comes up. That does tag down Trimby and Razok. Still alive in the middle. Vito was able to escape with his life. How? I do not know. Vander's the first to fall in the fight. But the GA is popped from Inspired. And now Misfits are routed and running and ruined. Has 10 seconds left. Rogue have got a five-man stack towards that dragon. A little bit of an overextension right there for Vito, instantly punished by Rogue. The composition loves to dive in and kill you. And the only thing that Misfits take out of this whole trade is a Garden Angel for Inspired. So Rogue will take that. They will take the mid lane tower. And very, very importantly is that Infernal Soul. But it could very well be converted into a Baron because look at Vanda. He's in the fountain oh! for another five minutes and they lost their spite. Oh, that was disgusting as Larson literally deletes Razork. Infernal Soul is secured and VTO is going to try to stop and slow down here. Rogue Baron gets interrupted at 2,900. Vito will be next on the list. Larson is on a killing spree. He picks himself up yet another. 2,900. There's no ways this gets stolen here. It's trying to find something back. Odo running for his life. 600 HP and Baron is secured. Here it will be the next target to fall to Larson. 8,000 gold lead. Baron buff on the entire team and infernal soul to Rogue. Firm control from Rogue. They know exactly how their composition works. They use that to brute force fights in the mid lane. They have the items advantage. They have the vision advantage. Vander is flashing away from Odo Ame's teleport. Running, running, running. Not going to be able to chase further from Odo. But this is just a 
another slaughter. But let's not kid ourselves. That this... was a little scary at Baron, but ultimately it was still in Rogue's control. But that is so strong from Rogue because they have the superior laners right now. Camille can go toe to toe with the Fiora. Uh, the LeBlanc can definitely go toe to toe with the Zoe. And if they don't want to brute force, which they will, they can also go one through one and take every single lane. Well, with the gigantic advantage Rogue have accrued, they now set themselves on the Nexus. Close out this next game. Razork will once oh. again be sent to the Fountain. 0-6-3. He has been removed from this game. The Nexus turrets are now falling. Hunt Summer remains unkilled, as does Inspired. And Rogue will be one Nexus away from the next round. Will be one Nexus away from Guaranteed Worlds. Rogue will pick themselves up just a few extra kills before they go to match point against Misfits. I'm going to be honest, I think that was just a little bit of a disappointing game. You, you summed it up in one sentence. Razok was removed yeah. from the game. Minute one, they took him away from his top lane, they split them up, they forced him to play towards bot side. What do they do? They instantly punish uh, top lane Fiora. They take the Ignite with Otto Amne. This proves that Rogue can play from wherever they damn please, whether it's mid, top, jungle, or bot. We've seen that so many times. And that slightly sloppy play from Rogue in game two was not as apparent. After some of the mechanical moves very, very early on from um, Hirich you know, in the 1v2 getting the first blood, I was like, oh, it's going to be like game two. But no, it wasn't. It was Rogue all day. I think it also falls back to the draft, right? Much harder to execute for yes. misfits. These guys, they have a blood that's like boiling. They want to go all in. They want to fight. And a lot of times when Razok wanted to fight, their composition didn't surround him we well have enough to, to move do that. On. We have to move on. We do have at least one more game because the winner of this series will face G2 Esports or Mad Lions who are clashing heads tomorrow in an epic grudge match. A match. As we go to break, let's get a small preview. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> It doesn't matter who won it last time. It just matters if you can win it this time again. What we can reach is higher than any other team. I think we're capable of beating anyone. I'm hungry to beat them, but I don't think they're gonna pose the biggest threat to us for lifting the trophy. Now the turn from Wonder, the rocket grab's gonna go and he hooks Hot Sama. The knock up is there. What champion can this man play? Well, this time around, we're not waiting for loser bracket to start preparing. Hey guys, it's not a sport. Um, okay, uh, wrap it up. It's not a sport. It's over. Not a sport? Eh? Who gives a sh? Welcome back to the LEC. Get ready for the match of the week in the battle. Systems are overloading. We can't risk another game. We need to take a break and regroup. We're starting to lose our mind. Captain, we cannot go back to Elo Hell. Last time it took us months to get out of it. Initiate break protocol. Hurry up! Uh, yes! Yes! I did it! I, we did it! We did it! Even the biggest champ needs a break.
Welcome back to the LEC studio. Rogue are on match point here in our first playoff series. And I would like to put a disclaimer that despite this stage, this is not a Jinx monologue. This is a fair celebration of Rogue's success so far. They came in as favorites against Misfits, and the work they did both in draft and through proactive early gameplay so far is what we expected from them here in summer playoffs. They came to defy the recent memes around the team and make EU fans understand that Rogue time has been postponed for today. They are here to prove that their journey wasn't just a one-time opportunity in spring, and after a strong dominant performance against Misfits so far, the message is clear. They are hungry for another finals, and they want to seize this dearly wished European title. I can't help but think about the heartbreaking finals Rogue experienced in spring, and I know too well what this title would mean in particular for Hans Sommer. His biggest goal in Europe is within his reach, and I'm confident when I say that Steven has never played better than this year, and still, I know that he hasn't reached his peak form. A quick reminder of our playoff format, this best of five will send the winning team to the 2021 World Championship, and I think that Rogue would appreciate a back-to-back -back qualification and a sweet revenge after their brief group stage journey from last year. Only one win is standing between them and a return at Worlds, but Smithfits showed in Game 2 that they are capable of putting off an upset. We will be back for Matchpoint after the break.